The Elite Four, Kanto's top four strongest trainers, ranked above everyone else in the world with power that even surpasses the gym leaders. In the manga, however, these guys are nowhere near good guys, blowing up cities, commanding armies of Pokemon, and committing other terrorist crimes. However, even with all this, these trainers had to come together just to jump one kid, being the main star of this video, Red. Red vs the Elite Four is one of the most brutal but cool battles in the series, and I really wanted to talk about it. It takes place over more than one battle, so I'm going to split this video up into three sections. So without further ado, let's begin with section one, Red vs Bruno. Alright, let's set the scene. It's been two years since Red became the champion of the Pokemon League. And ever since then, Red has received plenty of challenges from random trainers thinking they could defeat him. Which they obviously couldn't, because Red is that guy. Or he was that guy until now, because he's been sent another challenge and the location is a rocky wasteland. Specifically Mount Moon, but don't worry about that. Let me start by saying this. If a fight's going down and it's taking place in a rocky wasteland, you already know it's going to get rough real fast. Alright, so Red pulls up and his opponent is nowhere to be seen. Understandably, Red thinks this is a prank, until the rocks around him start shaking, revealing an onyx. Behind this onyx is its trainer, being Bruno of the Elite Four. Bruno compliments Red on his reflexes and officially challenges him to a battle, pulling out some crazy nunchuck pokeballs and throwing them at Red, who counters with a pokeball of his own. Ignoring the fact he's in a serious battle, Red asks Bruno why he sent the challenge and what the heck the Elite Four is. To be fair, these aren't bad questions at all. Bruno doesn't respond, instead he laughs, praising Red even more. The two continue their fight, with Red thinking that he has the upper hand by going for Hitmonlee's knees, but Bruno actually outsmarts him, leading to Pikachu taking a heavy blow. Red then has his own turn of laughter, revealing this is the first time he's felt alive after his battle with Blue. And damn bro, Kanto must have no good trainers for him to be feeling that after two years. Either way, the battle continues and Red does some deep thinking about Bruno's nunchucks, and catches on to Bruno changing Pokemon with the next matchup being Poliwrath vs Hitmonchan. Red's Poliwrath was having the upper hand until it falls down defeated. And Bruno reveals this was all part of his plan, using both Fire and Thunder Punch to switch up and accumulate damage. Quick side tangent I want to say, when I tell you Poliwrath is Red's most useless Pokemon, I really honestly mean it, like this guy faints all the time. Red and Bruno swap Pokemon again, next being Gyarados vs Onyx. Bruno tells Red that he feels the exact same way and has been looking for an opponent just like Red. The two share a cool moment and this battle starts getting really good. You can see Gyarados writhing in pain as well as Onyx when these two start getting really at it. However, this is where things start to go south with the appearance of Lorelei and Agatha. Looking at the way these two are standing, you can already tell a jumping is right around the corner. Back to the match, Red manages to drive off Onyx, forcing it underground. Knowing how dangerous Onyx can be underground, Red switches out to Venusaur so he can then use its vines to catch Onyx wherever it comes out. Red's plan does work, however, he does leave his behind vulnerable, and Onyx attacks with his tail, sending the group plummeting underground. Down in the tunnels, Onyx appears again, about to do a direct attack, but Bruno stops it at the last second, to let a group of Diglett pass. Bruno then goes on to tell Red about nature and learning from Pokemon, showing that he's actually a pretty good guy. But that's all gonna change right now, as Lorelei and Agatha have finally made their move, controlling Bruno through some mind control, and officially beginning the jumping of Red. Alright, as I said, Lorelai and Agatha have appeared and start talking to Red about how humans are destroying the Pokemon world and how coexistence is impossible. They also then reveal how they have the Badge Energy Amplifier. If you don't know what that is, just know it's something that takes the power from badges and allows you to control Pokemon. It's also the thing that fuses Moltres, Zapdos and Articuno. They then tell Red all they need is one last badge, being the Earth Badge. However, it was last seen with Giovanni and the last person seen with Giovanni was Red himself. Red sees that things aren't looking too good and looks for a way to get out of this jumping. Red sends out Aerodactyl and flies up out of the hole. And can I quickly say, the way Red flies around with Aerodactyl is really cool. That aside, Lorelai uses her Jinx to grab Red's leg and slowly grab his body, beginning to suffocate and interrogate him. Once they get their answers, they throw Red to the ground and begin telling him the other reason they called him here. They then go on to gas up Red, telling him how they've been watching him for two years now and that his challenge of Bruno was just to test his skills. So in other words, Bruno, Mr. I don't like surprise attacks was also part of this jumping. Honestly, pretty disappointing man. Either way, Red obviously rejects their invitation and gets ready to fight back. And as you can see by the way these guys are surrounding him, this is truly not looking good. And things go exactly how you'd imagine them. 
Red's Pokemon easily get taken out and Lorelei binds Red with Ice Shackles. Lorelei and Agatha then say, I, we're gonna head out. We don't wanna just see you die. So we'll leave you in Bruno's hands. But just in case you do have a chance of victory, we're gonna Ice Shackle your last Pokemon and add some mist around the mountain so no one can help you escape. At this point, I wouldn't even blame Red for regretting his choices. With his doom practically sealed and out of options, Red desperately tells Bruno, this isn't like you, like that one Logan Paul meme. Like Red, I know times are tough, but you met this guy like a few hours ago. This could very well be like him. Now with pretty much no hope, Red tries to dodge Hitmonlee's attacks, but a human vs Pokemon fight would never end in a human winning, and Red gets one of the meanest gut checks you'll ever see in Pokemon. Like Hitmonlee, this is not Dragon Ball, you do not have to do this at all. Red then stumbles towards a cliff and is hanging for his life. He tells Pikachu to stay away, as the ice on his hands and feet are starting to spread. And then this guy Red starts making bad puns, as if he's not at death's door right now. Red then tells Pikachu to run away, cause he's pretty much done for. And just like that, Red, the undefeated Kanto champion, takes his first L in two years. And can I add, the way that they left this man is disrespectful. Like, they turned him into a beautiful ice sculpture. Now, after that sorry display, let's go on to section three. So after a long time, Bruno goes back to the battlefield wishing for Red to come back so he can battle him again, as if he wasn't part of a group who literally jumped in with the intent to kill. After an even longer time, we jump to Cerise Island, where the main characters and gym leaders are fighting the Elite Four. If I'm being honest, the heroes are pretty much doing the same thing as the villains, ganging up on them, but these guys did it to Red first, so it's valid this time. Lieutenant Surge and Bill are fighting Bruno, and they're close to kicking a bucket, as they're fighting upon an onyx above an acid lake. Surge is just about to fall in when the main man himself, Red, pulls up to save the day. And you know the goat's return is something we've been waiting for for a long time. Since this guy's been missing since the start of the arc, and they give this man a full double page spread for his return. Got the whole cast crying about his return as well. Look at this man, posing as if he's already won. Now, you're probably wondering, how did Red escape freezing to death? Well, that's actually thanks to his greatest opposition, Giovanni. Let's flash back a bit. Red gets freed by the ground type master, but he doesn't see his face. Giovanni then tells Red that it's not his time to die yet and gives him three evolution stones. And although he did help, Giovanni himself is a separate case entirely, because the actions of this man in this arc make him a sorry excuse for a gym leader, heck, even as a human being. But as I said, that's a different case, so I'll talk about it another time. Anyway, now Red's back in business, and you already know it's time to get revenge. Red tells Lieutenant Surge that he can deal with Bruno by himself, Bill tells Red that this guy's powerful, and Red tells him, yeah, I know. What's respectable is that Red wants a fair one-on-one, -on -one, even after what happened to him. So, Red approaches Bruno, and his mere presence has Bruno suffering from PTSD, with Bruno trying to piece together everything that happened while he was mind-controlled. But then he switches up, and he's like, you know what, screw all of that. I'm here to fight my dream opponent, so let's have a fair and square fight, with Red agreeing. Bruno starts off with Hitmonchan's Fire Punch to deal with Venusaur. Red thinks of swapping to Poliwrath, but decides not to due to Hitmonchan's ability of Fire and Thunder Punch and not to make the same mistake twice. Bruno brags how there's no Pokemon that Red has that can defeat him with Thunder, Fire and Ice Punches. So Red has no choice but to pull out his secret weapon. Actually, my bad, secret weapons. Because it's time for Red's Evolution Stones to do their thing. Red sends out his trump card being Eevee, which if you didn't know has a special ability of evolving, then reverting back to its original state. However, before Eevee couldn't control his power properly, but now with the evolution stones, it can do so freely. The battle resumes with Red's Eevee countering everything Hitmonchan throws, turning into Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon. Realizing he could actually lose, Bruno resolves in sending out Machamp to help out, and Red counters with sending out Poliwrath. Bruno then reveals his own secret weapon, having his Machamp remove its belt, which was storing its power. Now at full power, Machamp easily knocks V into the acid, and Poliwrath gets pinned into the ground. But, V comes to the rescue with the use of Acid Armor, and also a puddle left behind by Poliwrath. And with the use of a Thunderstone and Jolteon's pin missile, Red takes out both Hitmonchan and Machamp. Bruno then begins to laugh, accepting his defeat. And then Bro switches up again, telling Red that he never cared about the Elite Force plans, and that he always believed humans and Pokemon can live together, since that's what he's been doing this whole time. He then thanks Red for the battle and begins to take his leave. Huh. <sighs> Alright, so Bruno, if you knew all of this, why were you with Elite Four in the first place? All you did was cause problems and now you're just gonna leave without even lending a hand. Realistically, this guy should be arrested. He was part of a terrorist group and now he's walking away as if he didn't take part in any of this. 
This city that Lars blew up definitely had some casualties. And Bruno, you're part of Lance's team. You are an accomplice in all of this. You need to be behind bars, man. Anyway, although Red didn't get to deal with Agatha and Lorelei, those two got dealt with by Green and Blue. Either way, all's well that ends well, am I right? So that brings this video to an end. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it was a different type of video, but I wanted to try something new. If you did enjoy it, let me know because there's plenty of other cool moments and with other cool characters that I want to talk about. With all that said and done, take care.